Well, I can see how it can it can get confusing if you're using Lightroom in Photoshop or Camera Raw in Photoshop but to, to where you should do certain edits to your photos. And, and I hear it all the time. And then the confusion doesn't get helped when recently Adobe adds a tool inside of Photoshop called Adjust Colors, which is not actually a new tool. You're gonna see it's really based on something that's older just with some enhancements in there. And you're like, well, where should I adjust colors if Adobe's putting energy into this? and they're putting energy into giving us color adjustments inside of Lightroom, throw that point color panel that we've gotten in the last few years, add all of the masking enhancements that we have. Now we can really target our color adjustments um, and then throw in there the fact that we can create a color-based mask and add color adjustments to it. You're, you're left with the thought of like, where do I do my color adjustments? And so that's what I want to uh, tackle in this video because this new adjust color feature inside of Photoshop, I think is meant for a certain person I've got some pretty firm feelings on who that person is. And if you're a photographer, it really isn't you, but we'll go ahead and talk about why in this video. Uh, we're gonna start off with a landscape photo. I'll show you, I'll show you a, a wildlife photo in just a minute here, but we'll start off with a landscape photo. And what we wanna do is we wanna make sure we see this little uh, task bar here. And if you go down there to the window menu, you can see contextual task bars, the way to turn it on or turn it off. But recently in the newer versions of Photoshop has popped up this little thing called adjust colors. This is what a lot of people have been talking about. So we click on it. What's changed about it is it gives you this little color wheel here. And I, I don't necessarily want to dive fully into all of the things that adjust colors can do. What I want to just do here is show you why I think there's a better option than this, but it's going to give you uh, what's new is all of these different colors here. Okay. And essentially what it's doing is it's finding the dominant colors inside of your photo and given that giving you a very quick way to add them. It has put a hue saturation adjustment layer over into your layer stack there. And you can see the preset says prominent colors. Okay. So that's, that's what's new and different about it. So let's go ahead and we'll, we'll delete that for a second. We'll just start from scratch. So that's essentially what it's doing. So when we click on adjust colors, it's finding the prominent colors in your photo, giving you quick access to them rather than you digging into the hue and saturation adjustment layer. And it does offer some new features. So let's go ahead and test it out. So we'll go to the greens. We'll target the greens in here. And I'll, let's say I want to boost the saturation of those greens. So I go over here and I start to boost the saturation. You can see now, the first thing is, is it falls apart. It falls apart pretty quickly. Okay. It, it's, it's very, very heavy handed and it does start to fall apart in the photo. It starts to, to me almost look you know, radioactive is the term that I use for it as we start to adjust those greens. And it's also attacking a lot of different greens in here. Okay. Now, of course we do have masks. We do have a lot of other tools that we could, we could refine that with, but at the same time, we don't want to have to do that much work on all these things to, to get there. So you can see it's, it's definitely going to be heavy handed. So that's the greens. We don't have to go all the way. If you go all the way, it, it's, it's ridiculous. And, and I'll, I'll give, I'll give, uh, I'll give the disclaimer that when I get into Lightroom, we can't get that heavy handed. So we'll never be able to get it to look this bad, but inside of here, you definitely can. So you don't want to go all the way up with it, but we'll go over here. We'll attack the blues, which is going to be right around this area of the sky. Same thing to me, it, to me, it makes the blues almost instantly radioactive. It's not, it's not working on the sky in the way that I want it. And there's a lot of atmospheric perspective and blue that would be in this mountain range here. And it's really drawn attention to that. It's really changing the colors of what we have in there. Again, we have masks, we have tools, we could get rid of that, but that's extra work. Okay. So it's getting pretty heavy handed with, with what we can do with the blues. Now, some other things we might want to do would be go into the greens and maybe brighten or darken them. That's what the lightness adjustment is for. So let's go back over here to the greens and I'll start to increase the lightness. Now, do you see this is, to me, this is one of the biggest problems. See how it almost looks desaturated. It's not making them brighter. It's in, in a sense desaturating them. It's almost going like if we're taking saturation down uh, instead of up. Same thing with the blues, okay? Let's go over here to the blues, take a look at the sky. If I go to my blues and I bring that brightness up, 
it's not really making it brighter. It's taking the blue, it, it, it does look a little brighter, but it's taking the blue saturation away. So let's jump over into Lightroom Classic. What I wanna show you here is we do have the option to go in here and with the color mixer panel, go over here to point color and we can sample colors which is very, very similar to what we're doing inside of Photoshop, right? We found the prominent colors. I guess the one difference is this Photoshop is finding the prominent colors for you, where in Lightroom, we have to go and find those colors, which I don't necessarily consider a bad thing, but I'll go over here and I'll click on the greens and then I'll start to increase that. And to me, even if I start to get heavy handed with it and get to that radioactive point, it, it's, not, it's not falling apart. We don't have a lot of jagged edges around these, and you're gonna see that a lot in the next example, but it's sticking mostly to the greens that I was working on, okay? Same thing, we'll go over here and we'll grab the blues, and I'll start to increase the saturation. I'm not saying we, we should increase the saturation, but let's push it to its limits. I was, I was pushing Photoshop to its limits, so let's push this to its limits. And you can see, even at its limits, it's not degrading the photo as badly as Photoshop was. Okay, here's where, again, same thing as before, we go to luminance, which is, I, I'll use quite a bit. You know, I necessarily don't wanna push a whole lot of color back in that sky. Maybe I wanna make it a little bit brighter. Maybe I wanna make it a little bit darker, almost as if it had a, a polarizing filter on it and make that a little bit darker, okay? But you can see it keeps the color. It is falling apart a little bit on that left cloud, but it keeps the color and it's just making it brighter or darker, which is what luminance should be doing. Okay, now go back over here to the greens, same thing. Luminance should make those brighter or darker. If I flip back over here to Photoshop, you'll see what luminance was doing to those areas that we were working with. Okay, so not quite what we'd be expecting from this. So that's one example. Let's flip over to a different example, which is wildlife. Now, really quick, this is not a commercial or not. This is adding context to what we're talking about here. I think it can get confusing because you see all these tools inside of Photoshop and Lightroom and all that overlap. It's important to remember Photoshop was created for everybody. Lightroom was created for photographers. So if you're wondering why, why would Adobe be actively pushing color adjustments into Photoshop, it's because you, the photographer, are not the only one that's using it. Okay, so you've got your graphic designers, illustrators, artists, commercial, whatever. And so take a graphic designer as an example. They're gonna need to use Photoshop. They're probably not using Lightroom, most of them. They're probably not even using Adobe Camera Raw, but they've got a layout and they need to, they need a good way to adjust colors. So this tool would work for them. Okay, this tool would help them. But if I had an agenda, it'd be one thing. If I only taught Photoshop, I only taught Lightroom, I could see it. I teach them both. And for the last 30 years, all I ever want is the best way to do something. That's all I'm ever after. And, and what I can tell you after using both of these and really working with both of these, that Lightroom, Camera Raw, that's the place where you should really be doing the majority of your color adjustments. Okay, back to our photo over here. So we're, we've got a different style of a photo here. I'm gonna go again, click on that taskbar to adjust colors. It will find the dominant colors in the photo. Let's go more toward one of the green ones here. And then this is where I think it really just starts to fall apart, right? It just, you get this almost blooming effect in certain areas, which looks odd. Um, you get weird artifacts and edges to this stuff. So uh, again, I'm, I know I went heavy handed with it, but even as we go lighter with it, it's just, to me, the adjustments aren't as good. Same thing with lightness. It's gonna make it look desaturated rather than brighter. It's like a bright desaturation or a dark desaturation, but either way, it's a desaturation of the colors, okay? And that's not what I would expect from something like this. Let's go target that little area in the background here. That's probably really gonna, like, look at what it does to the edges. It just it just falls apart. You get these weird, odd edges. You look at the bird's head, okay? If you take a look at the bird's head here, you can see you get these very weird artifacts and edges start to appear. So let's flip over. This time I'll use Adobe Lightroom which is the same thing as Lightroom Classic, just a different way. The, the tools are the same. I'm only using it just to show you that uh, these tools are exactly the same and they work the same. So we'll go and we'll take our eyedropper and we'll click over here in the greens, same thing. We're gonna get a much, a much better way of adjusting 
these greens. It's gonna look more natural as we push saturation into it. Would I ever go up this high? I wouldn't, but even as I do push it to 100%, it's not falling apart like before. Same thing I said as luminance, that's brighter, okay? Those are brighter greens, those are darker greens, but they still have saturation. Let's go grab some of these other colors here. Same thing, I'm able to push color into it without necessarily, you could see some of the edges start to degrade a little up there, but for the most part, we're able to push that color in there without having things uh, severely start to de degrade as we do it. I also think it's, it's really important to mention that it, if you get there in a way that's different than I'm suggesting and, and you like the tool that I'm talking about not to use, but it gives you good results, it's, that's totally okay. When that final photo gets printed and put on the wall or sits and looks at you on your computer or gets shared on social media, whatever it happens to be, nobody's gonna know the tools that were used to get there. And as long as the photo makes you say wow or makes somebody else say wow, who cares how you got there? If you're happy with the way you got there, that's really all that matters uh, when it comes down to it. So uh, while we're on the topic of color here, if you're looking for another color-related video to watch, I've got one here for you, so it's a great place to go to next.